Yo, 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 how you doing, man? Oh, oh, hey, hold on. I gotta go do something real quick, okay? Okay, catch you on the flip side, bro. Sorry. My name is Jamie Beheimer, and today I'm going to talk to you about communication and how that is not the right way to start an engaging activity of inclusive youth leadership. Over the past few weeks, you have received videos on inclusion, co-leadership, and teamwork, but this week we'll be talking about communication. Communication is a vital component of inclusive youth leadership because in order for all members of a group to work effectively, they need to share one common goal and be able to understand it comprehensively. This means that the language you use or the way you present information needs to be understandable for every individual. Communication is the most important key, and throughout this pillar, you will learn ways and resources, tricks and tips in helping you being a successful communicator. This pillar provides engaging activities so that you and your peers can become authentic leaders. The pre-activity for this pillar is telephone, otherwise known as whisper down the lane to some. It will simply start off with one person reciting an easy saying into one person's ear and continuing down the line. At the end, the person will be asked to recite what they heard, and the first person who went will say what the original sentence was. This activity is designed to show you the importance of communication and how things can be misinterpreted once they go through different amount of people. It also brings to importance the fact that in order for every member to understand what is being communicated, words, word choice, and sentencing need to be considered before starting or saying something. And remember, if you want to do something, you must let all other members know coming from you because it's way easier than having it shared down through a telephone line. Main activity number one for this pillar is called back to back. What will happen is your group will break into groups of two and each of you will sit back to back. One person will talk for a minute about something that has happened to them lately. After this minute is up, the other person will go and they will have a minute to talk. Finally, after this person finishes, each of you will move 50 feet away from each other, still facing back to back. This process is designed to show you how difficult it is when distance separates people from communication. It becomes increasingly more harder for people to hear each other once they're 50 feet away. This activity shows how eye contact and body language play an immense role in communication. Some questions to ask to yourself after you finish the activity include, did you find yourself missing the nonverbal gestures and facial expressions? Why or why not? And why do you feel they're important? And how easy was it to hear your partner when saying and sitting back to back? Was it more difficult or was it easier? Activity number two is called FAB. What will happen is you and your participants will break into groups of four. The facilitators will identify a Project Unify component or activity that the group has to sell to the rest of the room. One example could be the Spread the Word to End the Word campaign or a Partners Club. The presentation, however, must be FAB. S stands for Features and Focus of the Component. Using the five senses, sight, hearing, smell, taste, and touch, to describe an item, identifying the strengths and benefits, etc. A stands for Advantages of the Component. Informing the group about what the product is, what it can do, and how to, it can be used. B are the benefits of purchasing a component, describing what people will gain from purchasing this item. Each group will have 15 minutes to brainstorm their methods of selling. After collaboration time, each group will present its idea to the rest of the room. Presentations, however, may be no longer than two minutes. After you finish this activity, participants will engage in a reflection. We would like you guys to ask yourself, which presentation was the most effective and why? What did they say? What did they do? Why did it stand out to you? And what could have been done to make the presentations more memorable? As a presenter, what is something that you could have done? Could you have talked louder? Could you have engaged with the audience? Could you have had more eye contact? Congratulations! You have finished the activities within the communication pillar, but now it's time for you and your group to have a group reflection. Within this reflection, we hope that you each take away the importance of effective communication and different methods and ways, techniques, and illustrations that can be used to make sure that effective communication is varied between your group and best working styles. After the group reflection, you will each be asked to engage in a personal reflection. What best ways do you communicate and why do you think so? After this, always remember that you can look to the back of the Inclusive Youth Leadership Guidebook for more resources on equitable conversations, an effective and beneficial part of effective communications. Thank you so much for watching and always remember that effective communication is 20% what you know and 80% how you feel about what you know. Because if you speak from the heart, your words will come easily. Thank you.